Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Disturbing Secrets of the Piglins Minecraft Deep, Deep Dive by Retro Gaming Now. Now, I have not seen this, but the Piglins are an interesting... Yeah, they're an interesting mob, because... they Yeah, they're very interesting, because in reality, it's, it's kind of weird they're in the nether, because they really shouldn't be there, because... They can burn. Not only that, they actually have to, like, hunt the hoglins for their survival. And yeah, the piglins are very interesting as well. Because, again, they could have used to be, like, pigs that turned into, like, these weird beasts due to the nether. Possibly. I don't know. That's the common theory, I think. But yeah, anyways, guys, we're jinxing the description. Make sure to retro gaming now. Then, it's also in the description. Let's get right into it. The game of Minecraft contains a wide variety of things to discover. Some of the more interesting aspects of the world are the mobs. There are, of course, simple beings like bats and cows. But then there are more complex groups, those which have a societal structure. The villagers are one, as well as the scheming pillagers. But there's a third society that exists in Minecraft, and it the piglins. the most interesting of them all. These are the piglins. Yeah, because they have bastions. In the nether, trying to survive amongst there's the also, like, a story about a it's war between them. Strange about them. Why do they live in decrepit structures? Are they actually yeah. related to pigs? Yeah, because the theory is is that there was like a war between them and the wither skeletons, right? And the bastions, they built though. They built the bastions, but then the wither skeletons like destroyed them, and that's why they're in like complete disarray. Are they even from the nether or somewhere else? Welcome to Deep Dive, a series where I explore some of the stranger and more obscure elements of games such as Minecraft. Throughout this series, we've slowly been developing a master lore of the game, piece by piece. I should mention that this video will reference previous Deep Dives, but I'll do my best to get you caught up if you haven't okay, seen it. Okay, good. The Deep Dive lore has a big puzzle that we've yet to solve, and that is the story of the Piglins. Tonight, we're going to try and understand who the Piglins are, and how they fit into the context of the world. Join me for a dive beneath the waves. All right. Oh, I like this change of introduction. That's a good introduction. Nice. All right. That's that's really cool. To understand piglins, we must first understand the place that they live. Piglins are a mob that are found exclusively in the Nether. The Nether is one of Minecraft's three dimensions, including the Overworld and the End. These dimensions are found in different planes of existence, with unique environments and rules. Different dimensions are connected through portals, which teleport someone from one dimension to the next. It's important to recognize that these portals are the only way to get from one to another. The nether doesn't literally exist beneath the overworld, for example. Rather, True, it's a completely yeah. different place, connected only by portals. This may seem obvious, but it's actually quite important. Although it's possible to travel between dimensions, it requires knowledge of how to build a portal. In the case of the nether, the portal can be built by constructing an obsidian frame and heating it. This will connect to a nearby portal in the nether if one exists, or spawn a new portal if one doesn't. The nether portal operates two ways. Teleporting to the nether automatically creates a path back home. There's something really interesting about the construction of the nether portal. It requires pure obsidian, which does not spawn naturally in the nether. It is, however, abundant. You're right! Water. It doesn't! What this means is that the first connection between the two dimensions had to have originated in the overworld. Since the nether has no obsidian, it's impossible that the reverse happen. This is important because it allows us to put the nether in a He's right! Place. The modern day nether is not the natural version of the nether. Instead, it's the dimension after it was explored by foreign beings. An important distinction that we'll need to keep in mind is whether or not something is native to the nether. Wait, so to see if that theory nether, too that the warp forest is man-made? The nether is quite a diverse place, both in flora and fauna. There are flying ghasts, fungal forests, and lava-walking striders. Mm. However, there's a big trait that unites them. These mobs are immune to fire and lava. This makes yeah. intuitive sense. In a scorchingly hostile dimension, perhaps no ability is more key to survival than immunity to heat. We see examples of this on Earth. Many organisms have adapted to extremely tough environments, typically known as extremophiles. The same has happened in the nether. To truly thrive, a mob must be resistant to fire. Okay. Fire immunity can serve as a basic test as to whether or not something is native to the nether. An easy example is the striders. Fire resistance is crucial to their lifestyle. They're so adapted to walking on lava that being anywhere else is uncomfortable. 
they become cold and shivery on Oh side. yeah. Thus, striders are almost certainly And I don't think they can walk the in water either. They become magma. hurt. Although there is a similarity to slimes, magma cubes have perfectly adapted to the environment in which they live. They can use their hopping abilities to navigate the sharp rocks of the basalt deltas biome with ease. They're also fireproof, useful for the random pools of lava that are found scattered about. These traits show that magma cubes are also native to the nether. How about a foreigner? Let's examine the endermen. They are not fire resistant. They're also found in multiple dimensions, including the end, which is full of them. So although they might wander around occasionally, endermen are not native to the nether. True. Okay, let's think about the piglins. The piglins, are they here natives? we go. The answer is probably no. They are not immune to fire. In fact, they're quite weak to it. In that case, where are they from? To answer that question, we need to take a closer look at them. Piglins are probably the most intelligent creatures. What about the hoglins? They're the only group in this dimension that lives as a society. They can be found in the nether wastes and crimson forest biomes. Yeah, because they also barter and trade. Yeah. Piglins carry gold swords and crossbows. And they also have weapons. To hunt hoglins. They've developed some sort of economy centered around gold. Yeah. They're willing to trade for various types of items. It's an advanced trait that reminds us of the villagers, a similarly intelligent species. Another similarity is that the piglins have developed specializations. They're split into two categories that True. are distinct enough that they're separate mobs. Yeah. The first is the standard piglin, which we've been talking about so far. And then the brute. But there are also piglin brutes, a more aggressive variant with a higher total health. Since they spawn in bastion remnants only, it seems clear that their job is to act as a line of defense, preventing unauthorized enemies from entering the home base. Piglins appear to have developed in ways somewhat similar to villagers, but there's a big difference. They don't have their own houses. Instead, they live in yeah, they, bastion remnants. He's right. Out. These structures are pretty interesting. Let's take a closer look at them and see if we can figure out what they're for. Bastion remnants exist in a state of decay, with broken down walls and treacherous pathways. The name tells us that this is a remnant of a once great bastion that has since fallen apart. The advancement, those were the days, confirms this suspicion. Bastions are but oh. the remains of an ancient past. It's not particularly strange to see broken down structures in Minecraft. Sunken ships and jungle temples both show signs of decay. What's weird is that these ruins are inhabited by the piglins. Why wouldn't the piglins repair the place they call home? Blackstone and basalt are common materials. Yeah, in the he's home. right. It'd be easy for the piglins to fix things up, right? The fact that the bastion remnants are not repaired tells us something important. It implies that the piglins did not build the bastion. Yeah, he's so right. They would be more than capable of repairing them. Rather, the piglins are merely using the bastions. This leads to a question. Who built the bastion remnants? As I mentioned earlier, bastions are made mostly of blackstone and basalt. However, there are a few building materials which should raise some eyebrows. These are lanterns and chains. They both require iron, a material which is not naturally present. Yeah, in wait! Furthermore, if we explore the chests, we can find a wide variety of foreign items, including diamond equipment, carrots, apples, and books. All of these require some component Ooh, that can okay. be another. They had to have come That means the ancient gold. builders came Let's here? Let's make things a bit more interesting. We've already established that the only way to travel between dimensions is to use a portal. You don't have to look too far to find one. Ruined portals exist in both the overworld and the nether, so a connection did exist at one point. These portals also have chests, presumably so that travelers could stock up before they left. At this point, it should be pretty obvious that travelers from the overworld came to the nether and built the bastion remnants. Yet the question remains, who? If you've watched any other videos in the Deep Dive series, you probably know the answer. Throughout the Minecraft world, there's extensive evidence that there used to exist a humanoid species called yeah. the Ancient Builders. They constructed the pyramids and monuments. They sailed in sunken ships. However, they don't exist anymore. Something catastrophic happened, a mass extinction event of sorts. Now they can only be found in their undead form as zombies and skeletons. There's strong reason to believe that these are the same beings who built the Bastion Remnants. The chest loot is characteristic of these builders, including humanoid equipment as well as foodstuffs found in other chests in the overworld. So what purpose would the ancient builders have for building these Bastions? A superficial answer would be that they needed a base to protect against the hostile elements. And while that's true, the reality that makes is deeper sense. than just that. Although I've been referring to bastions as a group, there's actually quite a bit of variety to them. Yeah, there, there are is. Four separate types of bastions, each with a different use. The first type is the bridge, and its purpose is perhaps the most obvious. The nether is full of dangerous lava lakes. Having a bridge to cross over them would be incredibly useful. The second type of bastion is the housing unit. Its usage is also self-explanatory. Having a secure place to live would be crucial for anyone who spent an extensive amount of time in the nether. 
The third type of bastion is the stables. Food is hard to find in the nether, and it's impossible so to So what, they captured uh, hoglins? It would make sense that meat would be the best source of renewable food. What we're discovering is that the ancient builders constructed quite a bit of infrastructure in the nether. Bastion remnants are huge. What were the ancient builders doing with them? They certainly weren't going to the nether for a nice vacation. They were here long term, capable of self-sustenance. There's something in the nether worth an extreme amount of effort to obtain. The fourth type of bastion gives us our answer. It's the treasure bastion. Mm. It has a huge cavern with many gold blocks at the bottom. Yeah. Where would all this gold come from? The nether itself. Gold is quite common in netherrack, much more so than the overworld. Where a better place to mine gold than the nether? But that's not all. Another major reason to mine gold is the netherite. It's the ultimate Minecraft material, more durable and more effective than diamond. Crafting netherite requires gold. If the ancient builders were trying to get a vast amount of netherite, they would need an equally vast amount of gold. Yeah, There's true. Evidence for this. Netherite scrap, ancient debris, and gold can all be found in bastions. However, they are far more common in treasure remnants. It's also the only place in Minecraft to find a netherite ingot. Whoa, that that's a pretty rare chest pure, there. The true goal was to obtain pure netherite. This all seems to make sense. The ancient builders journeyed to the nether and set up a mining operation to obtain gold and netherite. But there's still a big question we haven't answered. How do the piglins fit into this? After all, the player discovers piglins at Bastion Remnants, not ancient builders. To find a solution, we need to travel to an unexpected place, the Oval. Thus far, we've talked about how the piglins live and exist in the nether. But it's actually possible to find a piglin in the overworld without ever going to the nether. If lightning strikes a pig, it transforms oh, yeah! into a by piglin. This is Hold interesting. On. Yeah, this Tell is. That, under certain conditions, a pig can turn into a completely different species. So what exactly is the lightning doing to the pig? One notable property of lightning is that it's extremely hot. In real life, lightning can reach 50,000 Kelvin, many times greater true. than the surface of the sun. This yeah, that is actually true. What transforms the pig into a piglin. We already know that heat has bizarre properties in Minecraft. It's required for interdimensional teleportation, as both nether portals and end portals require something hot to work. Who's to say that extreme heat doesn't have even more strange properties? This leads us to a somewhat intriguing question. Could it be possible for this transformation to occur without a lightning strike? Is there any other possible? Yeah, probably within the nether. What would happen if a pig found itself in a place that's well known for its excessive heat? Yeah. I'm sure you can see what I'm getting at. If the heat from the lightning is indeed what causes the transformation, then it seems at least plausible that heat from the nether could do the same thing. Okay, yeah. Maybe it wouldn't be quite so quick, but surely the mechanism could still work. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Why would there even be pigs in the nether since they only spawn naturally in the overworld? The answer is, of course, the ancient builders. We already know that they well, have yeah. bastions specifically They brought pigs stables. into the nether. Their main food source may very well have been pigs. It makes sense. They're small, easy to transport into the nether, simple to breed, and provide a rich source of food. They can't farm plants, so pigs are a great alternative. The ancient builders did not know about the pigs' susceptibility to heat. After years and years in the nether, the pigs began to transform. One day, the ancient builders awoke to find their stables filled with not pigs, but a new species of piglins, something they had never seen before. This was probably quite shocking to them. But if there's one thing we know about the builders, it's that they were creative. They like to think of new ideas, explore new places, and find new ways to get the job done. And the builders had just stumbled upon something very useful, an unlimited supply of beings that could use the same type of tools and equipment that they did. With the discovery of the piglins, the builders saw a tempting opportunity. Why should they bother mining when there was a brand new workforce that could be created from mere pigs? Wouldn't mm, it be better so they're going to turn them into slaves? Instead? Then the builders could sit back and relax while the piglins did the hard labor in the mines. Why should they put themselves at risk in the dangerous nether when someone else could do it for them? So the ancient builders began to implement their plan. They showed the piglins how to mine. Wait, they can hold they pickaxes? The value of gold and that they I guess it makes jealous, sense. Protecting it from thieves. The piglins went to work in the filthy mines, hauling up gold and netherite when they could find it. The builders expanded their bastions to accommodate this influx of piglins, building special housing units and greatly increasing the number of bastions. The piglins mined so much that eventually no raw netherite remained, just debris of the valuable ore. Mm. Yet the builders were still not satisfied. That's where the ancient the debris. Piglins to even mine some of these scraps. But there was a problem. The piglins are not mechanical golems. They are living, breathing, rational beings. We know that piglins can go on hunting parties. 
They can understand the abstraction of currency. They have different skill sets in the form of specializations. Piglins are smart, possibly even as smart as the ancient builders or endermen. And unfortunately, it's hard to imagine that the builders didn't realize this. Disturbingly, it seemed as though they made a concerted effort to suppress the piglins. There are no nether portals in the remnants. This is not an accident. It's a deliberate choice. By spreading the portals around the nether, it would prevent piglins from easily escaping. Since piglins were not immune to fire, they could easily die trying to make their way to the portals. Oh yeah. This effectively trapped them in the bastion remnants. But even if the piglins did find the portals, it might not have even mattered. Nearby, chests often contain fire charges and flint and steel. I have to wonder if the builders closed the nether portals as they left, reigniting them whenever they needed. The builders did not want piglins escaping. They did mm, not that would actually them. make sense why there's rune portals in, in the, the nether then. Them with an iron fist. The piglins toiled away in an environment for which they were unsuited. But then, one day, the extinction event happened in the overworld. Vast numbers of builders died and became undead. Some tried to escape back to the nether, zombifying several piglins before their ultimate demise. The piglins fought back and were able to prevent mm. their entire species from falling as the builders did. Zombified piglins still exist, but the piglins as a whole were not overwhelmed. But with the builders gone, life began to change. The piglins were no longer forced to work in the mines. However, that also meant that the constant stream of items from the overworld had dried up. There were no more resupplies of food, armor, or other necessities. As their reserves began to empty, the piglins realized that they needed to find a way to live in the nether without help from the overworld. When their iron and diamond tools broke, they replaced them with gold variants. They sent out hunting parties to find hoglins. Hoglins, yes. Back into the stables where they used to live. They trained but hoglins seem native as well, too. I mean, the foreign. They seem foreign, too. Remnants. The builders did not teach them the art of construction, only how to mindlessly dig. Years and years passed, and the bastion remnants began to decay. The piglins ceased mining, having accumulated vast reserves of gold. However, the piglins still held gold in high regard. They began to use it as currency, trading in much the same way as villagers with emeralds. Time continued to pass. By the modern day, the ancient portals had completely decayed, and the piglins eke out a miserable existence in a hostile world. They still keep some relics of their past, willing to trade these bizarre items for more gold. But unfortunately, the piglins as a society were never able to thrive. When the player finds them, they're too far gone. This is the only life they know. The only thing that keeps them going is the prospect of finding just a little bit more gold. The piglins True. Long That's kind of sad. Builders, but it was these very builders that prevented them from truly flourishing. Through no fault of their own, they're cursed to live in the decaying bastions in the hell that is the nether. Mm. This is one of the more depressing theories we've covered on this channel. We tend to think of the ancient builders as a positive influence, leaving many interesting things to explore. But in this theory, we learned that they had some serious flaws, dominating the piglins for personal gain. When making a theory, I mean, we always need to I be guess. Look out for things that we might have missed or assumptions we've made. I feel like when we have made video, a lot of assumptions. I ask that you don't take these ideas as absolute truth. Yeah. Rather, think about the theory critically and come up with your own conclusions. There's certainly a few things we need to discuss. A big component of this theory is the idea that the heat from lightning causes transformation of pigs to piglins. In reality, we don't know for sure if that's the case. It could very well be the electricity or something else entirely. Another thing is that pigs struck by lightning become zombified piglins. Yeah, not regular not, piglins. Not regular, if yeah. that's the case, then why wouldn't pigs in the nether also become zombified piglins? This is a good point to mention. We know that a piglin can't exist in the overworld without becoming a zombie. Yeah. The explanation is that the zombie plague is airborne. If that's true, then it would make sense that any transformed pig would suddenly become a zombified piglin. I think it's plausible that the same wouldn't happen in the nether. No airborne plague means that a pig turns into a regular piglin, not a zombie. Since lightning doesn't strike in the nether, we can't really know for sure, but this line of reasoning makes sense to me. I've heard many theories suggest that the piglins built the bastions. They often point out that there's a block that looks like a pig used in its construction. Oh yeah! I don't see any reason that the ancient builders couldn't have done this. After all, the bastions were used by the piglins, so it would make sense to indicate that somewhere on the structure. It could have even been a warning to other ancient builders to be cautious. This theory definitely doesn't explain everything. For example, are hoglins derived from pigs? It does seem so, and one explanation could yeah. be that the fungi in the Crimson Forest have transformed them. There is precedent for this. Cows can be converted into mushrooms by spending enough oh, time yeah. in mushroom rooms. However, this is sort of beyond the scope of this theory. It doesn't matter too much even if we can't explain it either way.
So yeah, this is definitely an interesting one. I think the, the ideas there and the story that he comes up with is pretty good. I, I like it. It's definitely not a perfect theory. I think this one definitely kind of built on assumptions a little bit. And yeah, honestly, it's definitely an interesting theory. This doesn't cover all of it, and that's fair. And yeah, I feel like this is quite similar to a lot of other theories he's made, where he kind of just has some assumptions. So yeah, honestly, this wasn't terrible. I actually do, I still like it, objectively. I think it, objectively, it has some good editing, and I like the way he talks. And yeah, honestly, this, yeah, this theory was, it was okay. It wasn't the best theory, but I, I still don't mind. I, I like that he at least tries with this. And I feel like it does kind of make sense in his regard, because the whole theory in the first video about, like, teleportation and how, like, heat has something to do with it, that would make so much sense, especially with the nether. And, yeah, that would, that would make a lot of sense. It's just the whole, like, yeah, the pigs don't turn into piglins, so that's a big problem. Honestly, if they did, that would be, yeah, that would 100% prove it, that, like... The, yeah, that would 100% prove it, but they just don't do that, so that that does kind of suck. So, yeah, and also with the hogwin thing, they it, it does seem like they're pigs, but I guess he was saying that the Crimson Force turns them into hoglins rather than piglins. So, I which I guess makes sense because the whole mushroom thing where, like, you know, the yeah, basically being on the mycelium biome, they turn into like cows with mushrooms on it. So it may it makes sense, I guess, a little bit, but not not a not like 100%. This is definitely speculative. But yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the like, maybe subscribe my channel. See you next one. Bye.